Hi friends, welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia and I'm one of the second grade teachers at the Soulard School, but here for Teaching in Room 9, all of my lessons are on math for second graders, but everybody's always encouraged to join. Welcome back friends. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join me and I can't wait to jump into some new learning here together. I hope you're having a great start to your week and I'm really excited to be here with you. All right, so you guys know I love starting my lessons with our mindful minute exercise. So we're gonna go ahead and do some deep mindful breathing. We like to do these exercises to start our lessons so that way we are able to slow down, recenter our mind and our bodies, push out any of those negative feelings we might've been having throughout the day, and just take a moment to breathe and be very present in the moment. So we're gonna do some deep mindful breathing together, and then I thought it would be fun for us to do some Halloween yoga. So we'll do some different poses, I'll walk you through those um, each day together this week. All right. So if you are standing, I'd like you to stand about um, hip width apart, your feet flat on the ground, facing forward. Put your shoulders back, so stand up nice and tall and proud. If you're sitting, you can just sit up nice and straight. This way it really opens up our chest so that we are able to get those deep breaths in. We're gonna take a deep breath in through our nose, counting to three, and out through our mouth, counting to three. Ready, breathe in. and out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Nice job, you're gonna keep focusing on taking those deep breaths and I'm gonna talk you through our Halloween poses. So the first thing that we're going to do here together today is a ghost pose. So this is also called mountain pose if you're familiar with that. You're going to stand tall, again, legs uh, hip width apart, facing forward, feet flat, and straighten your arms alongside your body and stand tall and proud like a mountain or a tree. And you're gonna move your arms around as we breathe out, just like a ghost. Okay, ready? Breathe in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Move like a spooky ghost. Nice job. All right, breathe in through your nose again. And out through your mouth. Ooh, those spooky ghost arms. All right, now we're gonna move into moon pose, which this is just an extended mountain pose. So you're gonna stay standing tall in mountain pose, and you're gonna breathe in, and as you breathe in, raise your hands above your head, meet your hands together at the top, and then you can look up at the moon. Okay. So tall in mountain pose, breathe in through your nose. Arms up. Bring your hands together, look up at the moon. So big and beautiful on this spooky night. And breathe out. <sighs> Slowly bringing your arms down. Nice job. One more pose for us to do together today. All right, we're gonna do a crooked tree pose. So um, it'll be just like a regular tree pose where you're going to stand on one leg, bend your knees, and place the side of your foot on, the in, on your inner thigh, and then balance. And you can uh, have your arms out to help you balance. I also usually like to kind of grab on some, to something as I'm getting into this pose. So bring your one leg in, breathe in. Make your crooked tree branches and breathe out. Sway your branches in the wind. Okay, bring your leg down. And then last, uh, you're gonna do your other leg, okay. Okay, breathe in. Make your branches tall and high. Breathe out. Wave those branches in the wind. Pretend it's a dark and spooky night. And when you're ready, go ahead and slowly lower your leg down. 
Nice job, friends. You did amazing with our Halloween yoga poses. So we'll do different poses um, along with those uh, each day this week, and I'll talk you through them. All right, friends, let's go ahead and jump right into our learning goal for today. So all of our lessons this week are going to focus on this learning goal. And we put them in I can statements so you know exactly what you're able to do or know at the end of our lesson here together. So I can count by ones, fives, tens, starting at any number. And I can add or subtract and explain. So that explain part is really important. It's one thing to just be able to do or know how to, um, to do the skill, but being able to explain your thinking uh, really shows that you are understanding that concept. And that's what a real true mathematician would be able to do, would be able to not only know how to solve, but then be able to back up and explain their thinking. And so we'll be focusing on counting by ones, fives, tens, um, starting at any number, and then as I'm sure you guessed, we are going to be working on number lines again. Um, and we kind of uh, touched on this a little bit in my lessons last week, where as we started making bigger jumps, or when we'd make a total of 10 rivets or jumps all together, I started marking them off by tens. So it's gonna be a similar concept. We'll be working with open number lines and taking bigger jumps um, in order to solve an addition or subtraction problem. All right, friends, let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm gonna swing you around this way so you can see my chart over here. All right, there we go. So as I'm sure you noticed, there are lots of paper um, covering up different spaces on my chart. The reason for this is there's a lot of different information on this chart and I didn't wanna overwhelm your brains right off the bat. So each day, we'll work through a new addition strategy to solve using an open number line, and we'll also go through a, a subtraction strategy each day as well. And so as we start to learn new uh, strategies for us in order to be able to solve, I will take down um, the paper so that uh, by the end of the week, our entire chart will be open. We'll be able to have all of these amazing tools and strategies in our math toolbox to be able to know how to solve an addition and subtraction problem. So hopefully, um, as we're working last week and this week, uh, you're starting to feel a little bit more comfortable using number lines. So we're gonna be working on that again. As you can see at the top here, it says addition and subtraction with open number lines. And then you can see over here is our addition strategy. So there are four addition strategies up top here and down here is subtraction. There are three different ones that we will go through here. And then down here, um, we've got vocabulary that is important for this skill and knowing how to solve. So we'll review that each day as well. All right, so the one that we're gonna focus on today is, we'll start with addition. It says, make jumps of 10, then ones. So you'll use the number that you're starting at. You can see in green, it says, 49 plus 32. So we'll start at this first number here, and then we'll kind of break apart our other addend. So the number that we are adding along with it, we'll break that into tens, and then those little ones at the end. So right here says 49. In 32, I know that a two digit number is broken down into tens, and ones. So in the number 32, how many tens are there in 32? Nice, if you said three tens, you nailed it. If not, no worries, we're gonna work through this problem here together. So there are three tens, which is worth 10, 20, 30. And then how many ones do we have? You got it, two ones. So we'll make 10, 20, 30, three jumps to equal 30, and then we'll make those little two jumps for our strategy of make jumps of 10, and then ones. So 49 plus 10 is 49, ribbit, 59, ribbit, 69, ribbit, 79, so we jumped up 
10, 20, 30, big ribbit jumps. And now we are, went from 49, we're at 79. So we did these three tens. Now we just have to do those last two ones. So from 79, ribbit, ribbit, one, two, lands us at 81. So we made our jumps of 10, then ones. We started at this first number here in our number line. Then we broke apart our add end, the number we were adding, into tens and ones. And we made our jumps of 10 first, and then our ones. So our subtraction strategy today, friends, is the exact same thing, but we're just going to apply it to subtraction instead of addition. So here it says in green, 64 minus 24. So again, we're gonna start at that bigger number. So we're gonna start at 64, but instead of making ribbit, ribbit jumps forward, we're making ribbit jumps backwards. So we started at 64, so now we're going to take apart or break up this two digit number here. So I can see 24 is broken into two tens, right? 10, 20, and then how many ones? You got it, four ones. The number 24 is broken into two tens worth 10, 20, and four ones. So we'll start at 64 and make two ribbit, ribbit jumps of 10 backwards, okay? So 64, one ribbit, 54, another ribbit, 44. Okay, I've done my two tens. Now I have to do those ones. So from 44, I'm gonna jump back four times. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Lands me at 40. So 64 minus 24 is 40. And again, the same thing that we did up here for our addition strategy, we broke apart our add end into tens and ones, and we made our jumps of 10 first, and then our ones. And so our subtraction strategy, we did the same thing. The number that we are taking away, we broke it down into tens and ones. And we made our rivet jumps backwards for the first two tens, and then we did the other four ones after that. So before we move on, we're gonna practice this strategy here together. So hopefully it will start with practice, practice. It will start making sense to your brain. Um, but before we go on, I wanna come down to my little friend down here and talk about some of the vocabulary, just so that we can review that each day and so you get really comfortable with understanding the vocab that goes along with these skills. So you feel really confident in being able to solve. So the first one is add end. I'm sure you heard me just saying that add end is just a number that you add to another number. So 49 and 32, those are your two add ends that you're adding together to see how many you have all together or what is your sum or total. Then you see this word compensate, compensate. So we will come to this tomorrow when we learn our um, addition and subtraction for, uh, strategies of using a friendly number, which that's our next vocab word here as well. A friendly number is a nice clean number. So examples of a friendly number. 10, 20, 30, 40, or eight, even maybe fives too, like 15, 20, 25. That's a nice, easy number for us to be able to make a jump. Not so friendly numbers, 17, 32, 41, okay? So a friendly number would be 40, and then we would compensate for that extra one. So that'll make more sense as we go through that together tomorrow, but that's compensate, Friendly number, and then the last one we also went over today as well, combine, putting numbers together for addition, or break apart. So we break apart our add end, or the number that we are taking away, into tens and ones. All right, friends, let's go ahead and practice this skill here together. So I'm gonna swing you guys back around this way so that you can see my number lines that I have written on the board right here. So you can see in yellow at the top, I've written the skill or strategy that we're using today. We're doing our tens, 
than our ones. So we are breaking apart our either add-in or the number we're taking away into tens and ones. And you can see I've written an orange here addition. So we're gonna make our hops, but I'm gonna leave them up here just so you can kind of see and compare. But I thought it'd be easier for your brains to be able to see the difference between the two if I did all of my addition hops in orange and all my subtraction hops in green. So I wrote those up at the top as well so then it can be fresh in your brain for you to understand. So we're gonna go ahead and practice this skill here together. So 27 plus 39, okay? So that's what we wanna figure out right now. 27 plus 39. What number am I going to get in all when I combine those two numbers together? So I'm going to start at 27, but I need to break apart my add-in into tens and ones. So how many tens and how many ones are in the number 39? Let's start with the tens. If you said three, you are really getting this. If not, no worries. We're gonna work through this together and really stretch our brains to be able to understand. So there are three tens. I'm even gonna put a little dotted line between the two so that you can see it better visually for your mind. Three tens and how many ones? Yeah, nine ones. So again, we're gonna use our strategy, tens then ones. Okay, so first I'm gonna make three 10 hops. So I do one rivet, there's a 10. And now I'm at 37, 27, 37, rivet. Another 10 is 47. Now I've done two, just one more, rivet. Now I'm at 57. So I've done my 10s. So this part of it is already done. Now we just have to do my ones. Okay, which are nine. So I'm gonna go from 57 up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here's my nine. 10, 20, 39. So there's my add end of 39. I added onto 27. And where did I land? Nice job. Yes, I landed at 66. So that is our answer here 66 is the total or our sum for 27 plus 39. All right, let's do it again, friends, and then we'll practice it with subtraction. We're gonna come down to this number line here. We're gonna practice the equation 14 plus 24. Okay, so what is my sum or total? So first thing I have to do is I break apart my add-in. 14 is where I'm starting right here. 24, let's break it into tens and ones, friends. Okay, how many tens? Two, nice job. And how many ones? You got it, friends. You're really getting good at this, four ones. So we're gonna make our jumps of 10, two jumps of 10, 10, 20 first, and then we'll do our four ones. Because again, our strategies are tens, then our ones. So starting at 14, we jump up 10, rivet. There's my first 10. And rivet. There's my second 10. Now I need to do my four ones. So I went 14, 24, 34. One, two, three, four. Where did I land, friends? 38. Nice job, friends. So uh, 14 plus 24 gave us a sum or a total of 38. We broke our 24 add-in down into two tens and four ones. We made our jumps on our number line for our tens and then our four ones. Now let's do the same problems, but we're gonna do subtraction this time. So I have my green for my subtraction. So if I am trying to figure out 66 minus, let's do 27, minus 27. We'll see what that's going to give us. 
So we know from our addition um, problem that we just did and from all our work we've been doing with fat families that we're going to get 39 will be our sum, or I mean, I'm sorry, our difference. Let's go ahead and see it and practice it here together. So I'm gonna start at 66 this time. I'm gonna go on the bottom here for our um, subtraction jumps. So we'll break 27 down into two tens and seven ones. So 66, we're gonna jump back 10 to 56. I need to do it one more time again to 46. So there's our two tens that we've done. I've already done my two tens here. Now I need to do my seven ones. So I'm at 46 right now. And then I go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Landing at exactly like we thought, 39. Amazing friends. So you see how using our breaking apart either our um, other addend or the number we are taking away into tens and ones, jumping your tens first, and then jumping your ones. All right, I'm going to erase this top one so there's not too much information on the board here for us. And we are going to practice this other addition equation that we just did, but again, practicing it in subtraction. So now we're going to start at 38. minus 14. Okay, so again, from our fact families, we know it's gonna be that other number, so we're gonna get 24, okay? But let's go ahead and practice making our jumps by tens first, then ones. All right, so 38, I'm gonna jump back. So again, Sorry, before I get started, let's go ahead and break this down into tens and ones. 14 is one ten and four ones. So starting at 38 here, I will jump back one ten, rivet, and I have landed at 28. I've now done my tens. Now I have to do my four ones. 28, then I hop back. One, two, three, four. And what number did I land on? 24. Nice job, friends. So hopefully this is starting to make a little bit more sense with all of our practice we're doing here together, breaking apart that second number, um, either the add end or the number you're taking away into tens and ones, and then either adding or subtracting your tens first and then your ones. So since we've been talking a little bit about fact families, let's go ahead and practice it here together using our last number line that you see at the bottom here. So now, I went trick-or-treating. So I want to go through all of my treats that I have here together. So I realized that I have 32 chocolate treats. So these are my chocolate treats. And I know as a total, I've counted all of my candy already, and I have a total of 49. So I want to know, since I have 32 chocolate treats, how many sour treats did I get? So 32 plus what gives me a total of 49. So for my addition, I'm going to use my orange again, and I'm going to start at 32. Okay, and then I'm going to make a jump of 10 first because I'm trying to get all the way down here to 49. So 32 plus 10 is, here it is right here, 42, ribbit. So that's 10. Now, I know I've got 49 treats all together. So if I made another ribbit of 10, 42, I'd be at 52, that's too many. I don't have that many treats. So now I'm gonna go up from 42 by ones until I get to 49. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I made one jump of 10 and then one of seven. So 10 ones, or I'm sorry, I've got 10 and seven ones. What is our number? Let's put it together to make a two-digit number. 
17. Nice job, friends. And we know from fact families that also I can just switch these around. 32 chocolate treats, 17 sour treats give me 49 treats all together. Also, if I just switch it and I've got 17 sour treats, 32, I still have 32 chocolate treats and I still have 49 all together because I didn't add on any, I didn't take any away. We're just filling in our fact family. Chocolate, sour treats, give me a total of 49 Halloween uh, trick or treat candy all together. So again, though, we can see here if we did it from 17 and then we go up 10, 20, 30, all the way to 47, and then my other, boop, boop, all the way up to, two more to 49. So that is 17 plus 32, 10, we did 10, 20, 30, and then we did those last little two ones to give us 49. All right, I'm gonna erase that second hop so there's not too much on the board here for you. And we are going to do our subtraction side here. So I have 49 treats all together. Okay, I know that I have 32 chocolate treats. How many sour treats do I have? So starting at 49, I would break apart again, 32 into three tens and two ones. So 49, make one rivet back, 10 to 39. So that's my first 10, 39, another 10 back to 29. Then another 10 back to 19. So there's my three tens. I've already done those. Now I need to just do my boop, boop to 17. My two more to give me 17. Okay, so we know that 49 minus 32, all of my treats together, minus my chocolate gives me my sour. And then the same thing again, 49. If I were to take away my 17 sour, I would see that I have 32 chocolate treats. So we just filled up our fact family using our open number lines and using our tens then ones strategy. You guys did amazing. Thank you so much for all of your hard work. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.